ABO blood group. This is about incomplete dominance wherein they have mentioned snapdragon plant. So we need to do something with the color, right? So what happens here? Incomplete dominance means white and red will give you a pink. That is incomplete dominance. The length of DNA that contains the information for a coding strand so that there exactly the uh, tRNA and the rRNA can go and find that is nothing but the system. This is why I tell you don't buy heart in biology. You need to understand first what is a catalytic converter. Hello everyone, a warm welcome to the second session of the model question paper discussion. So in this session, we shall discuss about the part C and part D, wherein part D consists of two sections carrying five marks, that is section 1 and section 2. So in the previous session, we had discussed about the model question paper in detail, how exactly it looks and we also went in for learning about how to write the answers for the part A carrying 1 marks and part B carrying 2 marks of the question paper. So to start directly with knowing how to write the answers for part C. So under part C we have 10 questions are given out of which you need to answer only 5. Last year and all there was that is in the previous question papers only 2 or 3 extra options would have been given right but here you have 5 extra options for your benefit. So we need to write it in 40 to 80 words each and here also wherever applicable diagram with proper labeling. So moving further question number 26. So write the questions properly. Don't skip the questions or don't write the wrong questions. The marks will be lost. So that is why be careful while writing the question numbers. So the first question that is a 26 question under the part C that is write a note on external fertilization. So you need to write a short note of about 40 to 80 words or a paragraph for external fertilization. So what is external fertilization? So start with what is external fertilization and then write about it. So it is a type of fertilization wherein syngamy occurs, right? So what is syngamy? Syngamy is nothing but the fusion of the male sperm and the female egg it takes place or the fertilization takes place outside the body. So that is in, if you forget the word syngamy, you can also write fusion or fertilization. So it is a type of fertilization in which the fusion occurs outside the body of an organism. And also write here an example. Example, most aquatic organisms like algae, fish, amphibians, etc. So you can write either any one example. Example, algae, fish or amphibians. Next, write one more point. So here, the major disadvantages of external fertilization is they produce a large number of offsprings. There is nothing that we can write here apart from that, right? So the answer is only so much. So you need to get three marks here. So write the definition, write an example, then write either an advantage or disadvantage. So disadvantage is more in external fertilization. So write about the disadvantage. So the major disadvantage of external fertilization is that they produce a large number of offspring, but the offsprings are vulnerable to predators. Why are they vulnerable to predators? Because it is laid outside the body, right? So when it is inside the body, the predator cannot consume that particular embryo. But in this particular case, since the fertilization is taking place outside the body, be it in the form of an egg or like that, because it is outside the body of the organism, it is vulnerable to the predator. So that is one of the disadvantages. Here the survival rate is very very less, though the number of the eggs that are produced is too much in this particular case. So this is about so you write an example, you write the definition, you write the disadvantage, you'll get three marks here. Next question, explain any three outbreeding devices in flowering plants. So here you need to write any three outbreeding devices in flowering plants. So if possible, here I've marked it in bold because if possible, you can just uh, write the definition. Otherwise, you can skip the definition. So outbreeding devices are the mechanisms which are followed and adopted by plants in order to prevent self-pollination. So write the definition. What are these outbreeding devices? So the devices are nothing but which the methodologies which are adopted in order to prevent the plants from undergoing 
self pollination so if self pollination continuously happens what happens it will lead to inbreeding depression right so that is the reason so what are the three there are many number of outbreeding devices we need to write about any three here which will fetch you three marks so one is unisexuality so the plant may be unisexual which means it may exhibit either male or female gametes next is dichogamy so here unisexuality should be checked one is going for outbreeding methods on unisexual plants so therefore if it is bisexual what happens in the one flower itself both the male and the female reproductive parts will be there therefore chances of inbreeding or self pollination is more so to prevent inbreeding to promote outbreeding we need to choose you plants that are unisexual so that a one flower male organ will be there in another flower the female organ will be there therefore chances of self pollination is not at all there so that is one methodology that is choosing unisexual plants next is dichogamy so in this mechanism the male reproductive part or the anther and the female reproductive part that is the stigma they mature at different times so you have to choose flowers which exhibit dichogamy that is say for example bisexual flower the male and the female reproductive part is in the same flower what will happen if the anther produce pollens and the stigma mature at the same time what might happen the pollen grains will fall on the stigma and self pollination will occur right so that is why we have to choose such plants which exhibit dichogamy so in this particular case what we need to do we have to choose plants which exhibit dichogamy it is a bisexual flower wherein the male reproductive part and female reproductive part is in the same flower they should mature at different types so that when the anthers burst out and the pollen grains are released the stigma is not mature to receive the pollen grain so therefore without an option what happens cross pollination will occur with another flower so therefore dichogamy is one such uh, mechanism for outbreeding devices next is self sterility the gene in the female reproductive part of the flower which recognizes the gene present in the pollen grain of the same plant prevents the fertilization resulting in self sterility here the plant itself say for example in a bisexual plant the plant itself will not allow the pollen grains to fall on its own stigma of the same flower so that is nothing but self sterility so self sterility can also be exhibited so we can choose plants which exhibit self sterility so write about these three devices if possible you can write the definition or definition if not not needed also or you can directly go in for writing about three outbreeding devices so each of these will fetch you one mark here one mark then here one mark therefore totally you'll get three marks for this so next five breeding devices are there any three you can write one more is hercogamy so these are the natural uh, barriers that actually prevent the pollen of the same flower to pollinate the ovary of the same flower so it is a natural barrier that are produced by the flowers next is heterostyly heterostyly means difference in the length of the style of the stigma as well as the anther so when they are of different heights what happens say for example the height of the stigma is too much and the height of the anther is very low then the pollen grains will not fall from the anther it will not go like this and fall on top of the stigma right so that is nothing but heterostyly so they are placed in different position then self pollination will not occur here so therefore this is heterostyly is also one such outbreeding devices so there are five any three you can write so this since there are five this can be also asked for five mark question but here since they have asked for three marks and they have asked you very clearly explain any three devices you can write any three devices sometimes they will not mention it as three devices they'll just write explain the different outbreeding devices so there you can use your brains and you can just write three outbreeding devices because it is for 3 marks that is how you need to answer so moving on to the next question list the functions of placenta so here it is a 3 mark question so better write three functions you write three functions each function will fetch you one mark that is three points you need to write or three functions you need to write So the placenta one function is it provides supplies oxygen and nutrients to the embryo next one is helps in removing 
carbon dioxide and excretory or waste materials produced by the embryo and the third one is it is connected to the embryo through an umbilical cord which helps in the transport of that is food substances to and from the embryo that is exchange of food substances between the mother and the embryo. So these are the three functions, three functions you write you will get three marks. So moving on to the next question why Drosophila melanogaster? is considered suitable for genetic studies here also there are five points any three or four you can write which will fetch you three marks any three reasons why drosophila melanogaster is chosen for genetic experiment drosophila melanogaster is found to be very suitable for genetic studies because no need of writing this directly you can go in for writing the points they could be grown in simple synthetic medium that is one of the point in the laboratory itself and they complete their life cycle. Their life cycle is very short that is within about 14 days they complete their life cycle. A single mating couple they can produce large number of progenies that is one point and next is male and female you can clearly distinguish which is male and which is female. So they are clearly distinguishable so that is one point. So it has few hereditary variations are very very few therefore a lot of um, doubts can be eliminated because only few variations they exhibit so those few variations we can study them very properly under the microscope. So these are the reasons. So if you don't need to write so much long sentences you can also write they are easy to grow in synthetic medium in the laboratory they have a very short life cycle of 14 days and uh, they produce a large number of progenies then male and female can be distinguished very easily and they have very less hereditary material which can be easily observed under the microscope. So these points if you write it will fetch you 3 marks. So at least because you write very small sentences here the words that you use are very less here at least write 4 points. Don't just limit yourself for writing 3 points here. So next question mention the role of here they have asked mention the role of promoter 1 mark mention the role of terminator 1 mark cistron 1 mark. So these 3 if you write you will get 3 marks. So promoter provides the site for binding of RNA. So RNA polymerase enzyme if it has to go and bind where exactly it should go and bind on the DNA. On the DNA strand there is a promoter region on the promoter region only this RNA polymerase will go and bind. So next is a terminator. So what is a terminator? It is a sequence of DNA that causes the RNA polymerase to terminate transcription where exactly the transcription has to end on the template strand that will be decided by the or the coding strand that will be decided by the terminator sequence. Next is what is cistron? Cistron it is a length of DNA that contains information for coding a specific polypeptide chain or a functional RNA molecule that is either a it helps in the attachment so that is the transfer RNA transfer RNA tRNA or rRNA that is ribosomal RNA where exactly should they go and bind first they should bind on a coding strand right so the length of DNA that contains the information for a coding strand so that there exactly the uh, tRNA and the rRNA can go and bind that is nothing but the cistron so these three you write so you get one mark here one mark one mark totally three marks. So if you write these two and uh, don't know the answer for cistron you will lose one mark you will get two mark. So that is why even though you know the two and you don't know the third one please attempt so that at least you will get two marks here. So that is the reason. Okay. Next one enlist any three measures useful for prevention and control of alcohol and drug abuse among adolescents. So any three reasons you need to write. So first one is to create awareness of what all the side effects will be there. It will give you one mark. Next is treatment of people who are already addicted. One mark. Then provide moral support and counseling. One mark. So one one point you write it will fetch you one mark. But always write an extra point. It is better because the words are less here. So avoid any kind of temptations and peer pressure. So one mark. So so much you write you will get three marks here. 
Next moving on to question number 32. What is biofortification? So here they have asked two questions. What is biofortification? And next one is they have written mention any two objectives. So to distinguish I have given in bold letters and then in the normal letters so that you can understand two different questions here. So here what is biofortification? Biofortification you need to write the definition. You will get one mark. Biofortification is a process of breeding crops with higher levels of vitamins, minerals, proteins and fat content. If you write so much, you will get one mark. Next is mention any two objectives. Here four objectives are there. You mention any two objectives. For each objective, you will get one mark each. Therefore, it is two marks. So, therefore, the whole question will be for three marks. So, two points you can write about this. Next, moving on to the next question graphically represent logistic growth curve. So here there are two growth curves that they have shown here. One is exponential growth curve and the other one is logistic growth curve. So here it is enough only if you draw the logistic growth curve. The other one is not needed because it was there in the textbook. I have put it as such. So this diagram is there in the textbook. So please refer and draw exactly. And not just drawing is important. You need to mention in the x-axis we have the y-axis in the x-axis time that should be mentioned in the y-axis population density should be mentioned then we need to draw a, the carrying capacity that line we need to draw and you need to mention what k here is what is k k is the carrying capacity that has to be mentioned here you have written a what is a a is plot is exponential so this is the exponential growth curve this is the logistic growth curve here they have only asked for logistic growth curve so if you write only logistic growth curve it is enough the other one no need of mentioning about that then b b is when responses are limiting the growth plot is logistic so this is the logistic growth growth curve so that you need to mention and uh, dn by dt so what is dn what is dt what is rn what is k what is n all that has to be mentioned so k we have already written it is the carrying capacity so all that has to be mentioned so this is the diagram taken from the ncert so please follow the same diagram so so much you draw and write about it you will get three marks so next moving on to question number 34 so here schematic representation schematically represents simplified model of phosphorus cycling in terrestrial ecosystem so if you look at your textbook they have given some pictures and all that so all those pictures trees animals will consume a lot of time so no need of drawing all that eliminate the pictures only the schematic representation, only the words you need to write here. So what is the schematic representation of phosphorus cycle? So you have carbon cycle, phosphorus cycle and all that right here. They have asked phosphorus cycling in ecosystem. So first what happens, we have the rock minerals that are there. So the weathering of rocks will take place which will add to the, uh, that is rocks will be added and to the soil. Then in the soil when the rain falls, it will form a soil solution. Apart from that to the soil, what will be added? The consumers. Consumers will be consumed by the detritus. That is detritus are the organisms such as the earthworms, right? Which break down the food particles into smaller particles. So these detritus, they will undergo decomposition. When they die, they will undergo decomposition. So if you say, I'll start from the producers here. So first mention about the producers. So the producers are eaten by the consumers, right? What are the consumers? Producers are the plants here. What are the consumers? Consumers are the animals here, the herbivorous animals. Next, these herbivorous animals, they, even the plants can also directly die and decay and they can add on to the soil solution. Not just that, even the consumers can also directly die and decay and add on to the soil solution. Next is these consumers, when they die and decay, the detritus, they are there, they will break them down into detritus let it be the microorganisms as well or the decomposes they will break them into smaller particles and they will add on to the soil solution not just that these producers that they are the plants right so the older leaves will fall on the ground so when they fall on the ground the detritus that the earthworms they will feed on the plants they will break down these leaves into smaller bits and they will um, add on again these smaller bits will undergo decomposition and they'll add on to the soil solution now from these soil solution again the producers will uptake they will take up the nutrients 
and not just that the rocks and all that is there on the ground that will also undergo weathering process and they will add on to the soil solution now when the soil solution runoff runoff means that is during heavy rains and all that when they get washed away they will move to another place there also when the soil solution moves to another place there also they will help in the development of the plants and all that so that is the cycle without the diagram and all that schematic representation if you write it will fetch you three marks so this is also taken from the ncert textbook so next question write a note on catalytic converters so what are catalytic converters catalytic converters you need to understand so this is why i tell you don't buy heart in biology you need to understand first what is a catalytic converter what is a catalytic converter catalytic converter is something that is used in vehicles so if it is used in vehicles we have to be good enough to understand that it is something to do with increasing the quality of the smoke or in replenishing the smoke and then releasing into the environment so catalytic converters are used to clean the environment by depleting the emission of various poisonous gases so first you need to write the definition about what catalytic converters are then you need to write about the catalytic converter so the catalysts of the catalytic converter they transform the unburnt hydrocarbon so hydrocarbons that are present in the fuel right be it the petrol or the diesel or whatever unburnt hydrocarbons they get converted into water and carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide is changed to carbon dioxide and nitric oxide is converted to nitrogen gas so carbon monoxide nitric oxide then hydrocarbons all these are not good for the environment but all these are present in the fuel so this catalytic converter will be fixed to the exhaust so that these fuels before they are letting out when they are burnt before they are let out into the environment then in there itself they get converted into water carbon dioxide nitrogen gas and then they are left out and these uh, carbon dioxide nitrogen gas and all that they are not harmful because they are already present in the atmosphere carbon dioxide will be utilized by the plant so that therefore it will not cause much harm to the environment so so much if you write it will get fetch you three marks next moving on to part d so part d is divided into two sections section 1 and section 2 wherein everywhere it is uh, about five marks here so here eight questions are given in section 1 eight questions are given out of which any four you need to answer and it should be about 200 to 250 words so here you can see explain the following pollination in vallis neria this is for 3 marks wall of pollen grain this is for 3 marks so you need to write how pollination occurs in vallis neria it will fetch you 3 marks next moving on to wall of pollen grain so wall of pollen grain here don't write about the pollen size the structure of the pollen all that what they have mentioned specifically they have mentioned specifically wall of pollen grain so concentrate on writing only about the wall of the pollen grain what is the wall of the pollen grain made up of it is made up of a hard exine and it is made up of a intine right so concentrate on writing about intine and exine you will get Two marks here. Therefore, totally five marks. So, so much if you write, you will get five marks. Here. Next is sketch and label the sectional weave of human female reproductive system. This is a very important question which keeps repeating in most of the question papers now and then. So, please read this very carefully. So, there are a lot of labelings. Any eight label you do, draw the diagram properly. This diagram has been taken as it is from the NCERT textbook. so draw exactly and do the same labeling any eight label you can do so you need to draw and uh, mentioning about the wall of the uterus so what you can do you can just write wall of the uterus and then you can go in for any seven labeling here or you can mention exactly what are the walls of the uterus you can write endometrium myometrium perimetrium so here three labeling is done then you can go for uterine cavity then uh, cervix cervical canal vagina ovary which is very important here also important ones you need to mark then uh, fallopian tube is important so finished with uh, one two then three labels then four then we finished five six seven then eight one more extra we have taken here nine please do seven to eight 
labeling so that is what i said right if all together you mention this as uterine cavity and you forget these three then you can go in for other labelings otherwise you mention here these three labels you will get three labels are already done here so don't forget to mention about the fallopian tube the uterine cavity then uh, the wall of the uterus then ovary because all these are very important here so that is why at least those markings has to be compulsory done there so this is about the diagram draw the diagram very neatly and don't draw it like a stamp size diagram draw it big not like a very small diagram draw it big neatly mark using a scale mark it don't just use your hands let everything be neat if you're neat the person who is correcting it will understand your discipline very well he will give you marks so that is why neatness of your paper is very very important the next question discuss various special techniques involved in art now here they have given art you might start wondering in the exam hall what is this art so first you need to know what art is art is assisted reproductive technology it comes in human reproductive health that chapter so it uh, assisted reproductive technologies so what are the assisted reproductive technologies one is in vitro fertilization so here uh, write about five assisted reproductive technology because this is five marks one is in vitro fertilization write about that then write about the gift that is gamete intrafallopian tube transfer then we have si that is intracytoplasmic sperm injection then we have artificial insemination or it is called intrauterine insemination so four are done here so four they have mentioned but please write five or you can write four and write extra points or you can write five and for each you can write one one point that will also do it will fetch you five marks so next moving on to the next question schematically represent incomplete dominance by taking the inheritance of flower color and snapdragon so in this chapter the example for test cross then uh, talking about the monohybrid cross dihybrid cross co-dominance incomplete dominance all this will be asked uh, explain law of segregation with an examples so all that are very important questions so in this particular model question paper they have asked about incomplete dominance for co-dominance you have to write abo blood group this is about incomplete dominance wherein they have mentioned snapdragon plant so we need to do something with the color right so what happens here incomplete dominance means white and red will give you a pink that is incomplete dominance so first we need to write flower color in snapdragon so example here so you need to write about the incomplete dominance then you need to go in for explanation so phenomenon where both the alleles of a character are expressed incompletely producing a new variant that is incomplete dominance right so what happens here red will mix with white to give you a pink so new variant is produced here so that is incomplete dominant here both are getting expressed but in pea plant and all what we had studied the dominant gene gets expressed right but this is we are talking about incomplete dominance here there is nothing like the dominant one will get expressed the recessive one will be suppressed but here what happens here is both will get expressed both will start to exhibit dominance and they get expressed leading to a new type of a plant variety which is producing pink flower so you here you need to write about the explanation so how exactly it was done so corens crossed homozygous red flower plant that is homozygous red flowered plant so red here is dominant therefore capital r r so he crossed it with homozygous white flowered plant it is recessive small r r but when he noticed the f1 generation he found that both got expressed and it produced a pink flowered plant so a dominant gene was also expressed a recessive gene was also expressed and a pink color producing pink flower producing plant was formed because the dominant gene fails to mask that is dominance right while studying one mark we had studied what does dominance means dominance means the recessive character will get suppressed and the dominance character will get expressed but here what happens in incomplete dominance the dominant character fails to suppress the recessive character therefore it will fail to express itself separately that is what happens after writing the explanation you need to go in for doing the 
that is this kind of a puzzle that is there which we need to do. So first we need to take the parental phenotype. So parental phenotype what we do? We take a red flowered plant then a white flowered plant. And what had we said? What is the parental genotype? Red flowered plant have homozygous dominant gene. White flowered plant will have homozygous recessive gene. This is the genotype, right? We are expressing the genotype. This is the phenotype. What is phenotype? When you look at a plant, you can say that plant is producing red color. That plant is producing white color flower. That is phenotype. Genotype means we are talking about the gametes there. So that is why you need to write RR and RR. Always they are expressed in pairs. That is allele, allelic form. That is why. Next here, talking about the gametes. What are the gametes that are involved here? So gametes that are involved are one R from here and another R from here. So two gametes are involved, right? Next we have to write the F1 hybrid. That is the first filial generation. What do we get? Here RR will be produced, right? So if you get confused here, if you buy heart and if you forget, that is why I say don't buy heart. If you get confused here, please put a checkerboard. Now, what are we crossing this with this, right? So, I'll put a checkerboard to make you understand. So, here we have R, then we have R, we have smaller, smaller. We are crossing the red flowered plant with the white flowered plant, right? So, here what happens here? We have RR. All are produced pink color. All will produce pink colored flower. Now you got the answer. It is pink. If you remember, you can write without the checkerboard. But if you forget, please put the checkerboard. So you will understand what the, that is the F1 generation will look like. Now we need to make a cross between the F1 generation. So when we make a cross between the F1 generation, what we will do? We will make a cross between RR and RR here. So, we'll see what happens here. So, you make a cross between the F1 generation that is the uh, pink flower and pink flower because in the F1 generation all the plants produce pink flower, right? Now, what are the gametes involved here? Capital R, small r, capital R, small r, right? Now, F2 generation, I've put a checkerboard here. So, I've taken uh, one of the parent RR, the other parent RR. Now, what happened? We'll get a red flower, we'll get a pink flower, pink and white flower. Now, we need to put the phenotypic ratio and the genotypic ratio. Now, talking about the phenotypic ratio. Phenotypic ratio and then genotypic. So, phenotypic means as I told you, when you look at the plant, you need to understand the color of the flower. When I am looking at here, how many red flowers are there? One. How many pink? Two. How many white? One. So, one is to two is to one is a phenotypic ratio. If you write so much, it is not enough. Under that, you need to mention red, pink, white. This should be mentioned. If you write and leave like this, your marks will be cut. Next is genotypic. When we talk about genotypic, we need to talk about the gametes. We need to talk about the genes. So, genotypic. How many dominant genes are there? RR, only one. Then small RR, two. Then one. Here also it is one is to two is to one. So, therefore, here both the phenotypic and genotypic ratio is the same. It is one is to two is to one itself. So, if you can see here, they are homozygous red, heterozygous pink, homozygous white. That you need to mention there. So, so much you write, you will get 5 marks. So, you have to explain and write it. It's not just enough if you write the parent, the genotype, the phenotype and all that you write and put a checkerboard and not write anything explanation, it will not fetch your mark. You need to explain and write about it. So, moving on to the next question under section 1, that is question number 40. Explain the experiment that made Frederick Griffith to conclude that our strain of Streptococcus pneumoniae. So, here Streptococcus pneumoniae. Underline it separately when you are writing because it is a scientific term, right? So, that is why. Somehow being transformed by heat killed S strain. So, you need to write about the experiment here. What happened when a S strain was used? What happened when a R strain was injected to the mice? So, you need to explain about that. Then you need to write this S strain injected into the mice, the mice will die. R strain injected into the mice, again the mice will die. But 
how exactly, why exactly this occurs. So you need to explain, then you need to give the schematic representation wherein our strain, if it is heat killed and in injected into the mice, the mice will live. But if it is not heat killed, the mice will die. Next to what he did, he took the S strain, then he mixed it with heat, heat killed the X S strain, but he took a live strain which was not heat killed. He took a live R strain which was not heat killed. When he injected in the mice, the mice lived. Why? Because though this R strain was live here, S strain, something from the heat killed S strain prevented the expression of the R strain, therefore making the mice to live here. So that is what his experiment proves. So you need to explain it thoroughly. This will fetch you 5 marks. The next question, state any 5 salient features of genetic code. So here you need to write the 5 salient features of genetic code. Each of the 5 salient features of genetic code that you write will carry 1 mark each. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 you can write. Here they have given a one more extra for a safer side. But if you know it exactly, if you know that your whatever you are writing is correct completely, then 5 features if you write it is enough. So, 5 features you write, it will fetch you 5 marks. So, that is why you need to read the question very, very carefully. Sometimes they will not ask you directly. Write any five salient features. They might just ask you, write the salient features of genetic code. You have to understand there. It is for five marks. So it is enough if I write five points or five features. So that is how you need to analyze and you need to write the answer. So moving on to the next uh, question, answer the following. So here if you can see, they have divided the question as into two questions, two marks and three marks. So differentiate between convergent and divergent evolution. So Two points each under this if you write it is enough. I have given here three, two if you write it is enough. So, uh, always when they ask differentiate, distinguish, please write it in the form of a table. Don't write it in the form of a paragraph. Don't write the side heading the, uh, convergent evolution, write about it, then write the side heading divergent evolution and write about it. No, don't do that. For easy understanding of the examiner and therefore easy fetching of marks, make two columns, write in the first column convergent evolution, the other end divergent evolution and then go for writing the differences. And when you write the differences, whatever you write this side, it should be same this side also. The same difference should be on the next side. Not writing this point and then in this uh, column writing the second point. No, they should be opposites of each other. See that you write opposite differences of each other. So two differences you write, it will fetch you two marks. Next one more question that is there. The second question, it is for three marks, right? Here three points you can write. It will fetch you three marks. So one mark, one sec, two mark, three marks. So, 3 marks, so totally 5 marks. So, here they have given, explain the weaves of Lamarck. So, you can write what were his weaves. So, they have given, uh, he said that evolution of life forms had occurred but driven by use and disuse of organs. It was mainly because of the use and disuse of organs. That was one. And uh, he gave the example of giraffe. You can explain the example of giraffe and you can write one more point here. So, giraffe slowly over the years because of use and disuse theory, they started to develop long necks from short necks. So, that is three points you write, it will fetch you three marks. So, this is about the question. So next, moving on to one more question, question number 43, that is schematically represent the life cycle of plasmodium. So, here in your textbook, they have given the picture of mosquito and all that. No need of drawing all that. You can just write the schematic representation, only write this. So, what happens first? When the mosquito bites another human, the sporozoids are injected with the bite. So, first what happens? First, you need to write about the person who is having malaria. Now, the mosquito will go and bite that person. Now, the sporozoids that are there will enter into the mosquito. After that, what you write? The parasite reaches the liver through the blood of the mosquito. Then the parasites reproduce asexually in the liver cells, bursting the cells and releasing into the blood. So, all this occurs in the human host. So, this side, whatever you are writing, you have to mention it as human host. This side, whatever you are writing, it is mosquito's host. 
So here in the humans, what happens from the infected person, the mosquito will go and bite a healthy person. So in the healthy person, the sporozoite will be deposited. The sporozoite will reach the liver through the blood. Once in the liver, it will start uh, attacking the liver cells and bursting the blood vessels of the liver and uh, bursting the cells of the liver and therefore releasing the blood into the body. Then the parasites, once inside the body, the parasites will reproduce asexually in the red blood cells bursting the red blood cells and causing cycles of fever and other symptoms. Now the released parasites will start infecting the new red blood cells. All these are there exactly how it is in your NCRT textbook. Only thing is I have eliminated the diagrams. No need of drawing the diagram. Just give a schematic representation like this. After that what happens now here the female and the male. So uh, sexual stage of gametocyte will occur. Now one more mosquito will go and bite this particular person. Now the parasite, the sporozoite that is there it will enter into the mosquito. Now in the mosquito what happens? In the female mosquito especially. The female mosquito will take up the gametocyte with the blood meal. Then the fertilization and development development take place in the mosquito's gut then what happens the mature infective stages escape from the gut and migrate to the mosquito salivary gland once it reaches the mosquito salivary gland when that mosquito goes and bites the person again it will be transported and again the cycle will transmit it and again the cycle will continue so, so so much you need to write no need of drawing even this diagram also only writing is enough here schematic representation so, so much you write it will you can also put it in your own words but it should be relevant so so much you write it will fetch you five marks so next moving on to part d same thing under that section two so under section two here six question will be given in that any three you need to answer again this is a five mark question so 200 to 254 words you need to write so here they have given the first question that is question number 44 Please write the question numbers properly. They have given the questions continuously. There is nothing like first main 1, 2, 15, second main again 1, 2, 15. Like that they have not given. They have given the continuous numbers. Why? Again there because you should not get confused. So that is the reason. So if you forget to write the main also, it is fine. But question number, please write it correctly. So explain the steps involved in breeding a new genetic variety of crop. So here you need to write five steps. So what are the first five steps? First one is collection of variability. You will get one mark. Explain it. You will get one mark. Next is evaluation and selection of parent. Explain it. One mark. Next cross hybridization among the selected parents. One mark. Same thing like this on it is there in your textbook as well. Next is one more thing is selection and testing of superior recombinant. One mark. Next uh, process is testing, release, commercialization of new cultivars, one mark. So just write one one point or in your own words, write one one point. So here, make sure that you write the side headings and then write a point. Side heading, then a point. Side heading, then a point. So that is how you need to write this. So easily it will fetch you five marks. Next, moving on to the next question. Here they have given five questions. Each question carries one mark. If you can see here, name the following group of chemical substances produced by some microbes that can kill or retard the growth of other microbes. What is it called? You just need to write it as question number. In your answer script, you need to write it as 45. Question number 1. No need of writing the question again. Just write it as antibiotics. Done. Only one word. You will get one mark here. Next question. Immunosuppressive agent used in organ transplant patient. Again, what you'll do? It is 45, right? So, you'll write it like this. 45, 1 was antibiotics. Second one was cyclosporin A. Third question, you'll write the answer. Then fourth question, you will write the answer. Fifth question, you will write the answer. Fourth question, third question, it is baculovirus. So viruses used as biocontrol agents having species-specific narrow-spectrum insecticidal application, it is baculovirus. 
No need of writing the question again. Just write the question number correctly like this and write it as baculovirus. Next fourth one, nitrogen fixing cyanobacterium distributed in aquatic and terrestrial environment. It is no stop. Just write the question number, no stop. Now if you write everything and you forget to write these questions, you lose marks because the examiner will get confused or you write everything and you forget to write it as question number 45. Again there he will not know for which question you have answered because he will not have the patience to look into the question paper and check, clarify again. So that is why. So write the question numbers correctly. Next fifth one, the fungal genus that forms mycorrhiza with plants, it is glomus species. So just write it as glomus species. So, so much you write, each is one mark you will get here, one mark, again one mark, one mark, one mark. Totally five marks. One, one question you answer, five marks. You answer only two, two marks. So, that is how it is being split. Next question, describe the procedure involved in the isolation of genetic material in different organisms. So, you need to write the different procedures. So, here they have given an explanation of how exactly the isolation of DNA takes place. Then they have written about the enzymes that is lysozyme enzyme, the cellulase enzyme, the chitinase, then the ribonuclease. What each of these enzymes does. So, so much you write, it will fetch you 5 marks. Not just that, proteases and also they have written about the other macromolecules and all that that are involved. Okay. Next is explain how ADA deficiency. So now ADA deficiency, you will start wondering what is this ADA deficiency. So uh, that is adenosine deaminase deficiency. So you need to know about it. What happens? So the name itself suggests adenosine deaminase. So it is an autosomal disorder that causes a immunodeficiency. It is a deficiency disorder. Name itself suggests ADA, adenosine deaminase deficiency disorder, right? So, explain how ADA deficiency can be cured by uh, gene therapy. So, if you e explain that, you will get marks there. And add a note on other types of therapies for curing ADA deficiency. So, if you write that, you will get a complete mark there. So, explain how it is cured. So, first you write a note on what exactly is ADA deficiency. Then write the treatment includes gene therapy. So, what the so first one is gene therapy. So, what is done in gene therapy? Next move to another one. So other types of therapy that is enzyme replacement therapy, allogenic hematopoietic stem cell transplant. Then we have autologous gene therapy. About all this you need to write. It will fetch you 5 marks. So next question. Here also they have divided the questions. Answer the following. List the advantages of predation for an ecosystem. So this if you list 3 marks. So how much 3 marks means how much you have to write points? Three points, right? Next here itself, it is one mark, one mark. They themselves have split. So therefore, totally three, four, five mark. So list the advantages of predation for an ecosystem. So three advantages you write, you'll get three marks here. One mark, one mark. For each of the advantage, you'll get three marks here. So three advantages you need to write here. So after this, next question. So next question is just one, one point you need to write. Name the types of interaction between the following. Here also what you need to write, the question number is 48, right? So 48 you will write, you will write one answer. Then again, under this only, write it as 2. Under 2, please be very careful, under this only, write it as, under 2, write it as A. What is the answer for A? It is common. No need of wasting your time writing the question again. It is commensalism. Then write it as B, it is mutualism. So this is how you need to write it. So all these writing the question numbers accordingly is very, very important here. So next question, explain the steps involved in decomposition. So you write a short uh, definition about what is decomposition, then go in for writing the point. So here we have mentioned five uh, steps are there in that. First one is fragmentation, explain what fragmentation is. Then leaching, explain what it is. Then catabolism. So you can see here one mark, one mark, one mark. So three steps you have written, you have got three marks. Next here again. Fourth step is humification, fifth step is mineralization. 
you'll get five marks. Totally, you will get five marks. Five steps you write, you will get five marks. So moving on to the last question. So here, write a note on. So here again, they have divided into three mark and two mark. Write a note on advantages of using CNG, joint forest management. So it is three marks. So write a note on advantages of using CNG. You need to write three or four points. It will fetch you three marks. Next, moving further, joint forest management. It is for two marks. You can write two points or you can write four points. So just write two points. It will fetch you two marks, any two points. So this is how you need to write your entire question paper. Write the question numbers correctly. Read the question and understand the question before answering. Don't be in a hurry. Always don't read the questions half. Give you an example in one mark question wherein explain the pyramidal bases that are present both in RNA and DNA. If you read half, then you will give the answer wrong. So understand, read completely and write it very well. So this was about the discussion related to the model question paper. So I hope you understood it very well. Now you have an idea how you need to write the answers for each and every question. So do your exams well. Don't take too much of stress. If you take stress, then you'll not be able to study well. So be calm. Always do a smart work. Keep your blueprint near you when you're studying. Study according to that and according to the model question paper pattern that they have given. So all the best for your exam. Do well. Thank you.